The worldly hopers. Well, they're enjoying, we are all enjoying a long weekend. A lot of our members are out of town enjoying the time with their family and uh, seizing the opportunity to uh, enjoy a, uh, a three day weekend. Um, some are, most of them are out of town, but praise God. Let us just say a quick prayer for them right now. Father God, wherever the other hopers are today, we know, Lord, that their hearts are here. We know, Lord, that uh, they're enjoying their time with their family. We pray that you continue to protect them. Pray that you give them safety as they drive around. I think the furthest are the Libramontes who will be coming down from Vancouver, driving all the way. Pray for your traveling mercies and for your safety and for your protection to be upon all of them. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give God a big clap off. We open our clubs on holiday morning. Can we give God a big clap Let us not look for the people who are not here. Let's thank God for the people who are here. Yeah. Amen? Right? Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, last week I started a series. Well, I started an introduction to my long series about the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. Last week we uh, learned about uh, uh, the background of the, the Ten Commandments. I believe that I have conveyed to you the biggest lesson about the Ten Commandments is that the things that it cannot do. We, we learned last week that the Ten Commandments cannot bring us to heaven. That the Ten Commandments is a mirror of who we are. A mirror of who we were before Christ. It's uh, We follow the Ten Commandments not because we want to be saved, but because we are saved. And although this Ten Commandments was originally given to the Jewish people some nearly 4,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, but we thank God that uh, we can still pick up the relevance of it for our lives today. It can be a good source of Christian conduct, uh, Christian attitude. So this morning... I want to thank uh, for thank God uh, for the creativity of our media team for helping me visualize the Ten Commandments. And this morning, I want to share with you the first commandment. And we entitled our sermon this morning, No Other Gods. No Other Gods. And uh, as we continue, uh, if you have your Bibles with you, let me just read the Ten Commandments. And uh, we can find that in the book of Exodus. And you can also find that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5. Okay, but let's uh, let's read let's read uh Exodus chapter 20. Okay? And let's begin reading with verse 1. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And God spoke all these words saying, remember, God spoke all this. Not, not just, if, I hope, can you, if you want, you can put uh, Exodus there. Chapter 20. This only up to 3. But let's, I want to read the whole, the whole thing. Okay? And God spoke. That is important. This is not something that was just picked up from a dream or something. Hey, this is uh, uh, first hand. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of bondage. This is the first one. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make to yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children, to the 
uh, third and fourth generations of those who hate me. But showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not withhold the guilt. Withhold him guiltless. Who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day it is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in it, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. Take note, you didn't say you should not kill. Because not all the kill, killings are murder. Right? We will study that. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his nor his female servant, nor his 65-inch plasma TV, <laughs> nor his 2018 Lexus RX 350. What's wrong with my bike? <laughs> Or anything that is your neighbor's. Okay. Let's stand the hands. Let's go ahead and let us pray. Father God, we thank you that your word is relevant. Thank you that your word, though it may have been thousands of years ago, but the principle and the morality of, of these words is still very true useful in our Christian lives. So we pray, Father, even as we discuss the first commandment this morning, let your word pierce into our hearts that we may know that we only have one God and there is no other. Holy Spirit, we ask that you be our teacher this morning as we commit this time in their hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the first command we'd like to share with you is in Exodus chapter 21 to 3. Then we go to our uh, verse there in, on my slide. And it says, The Lord spoke all this saying, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of bondage. The first commandment is, You shall have no other gods before me. Remember, these are called the Ten Commandments. It is not called the Ten Suggestions. Okay? This is not being suggested by God to us. These are being commanded by God for us. Right? Yeah? So the first is you shall have no other gods before me. Bring me to my next slide, which it says. And I want to elaborate the word have. Now, in the first commandment, when it says, you shall not have other gods, the word have there comes from a very rich Hebrew word, which means actually possessing a personal relationship with. It's not just, not just it being in existence, not just, not just it being with you, or it, it doesn't mean that, that it being one of the others, but when this commandment says, you shall not have. The have there means it is to be in a personal relationship with. So this verse is telling us explicitly that we should not have any other relationship, personal intimacy, personal relationship with any other gods. Amen. Now, the Bible 
The word other gods occur in the Bible 65 times. And it refers to various gods and goddesses. Now, are there any other gods and goddesses? There is none. But these other gods and goddesses are the gods and goddesses people make. These are the gods and goddesses that people make. Because there is only one true and living capital G God. He's the G. The all, the other else as there are the small G's who are not really gods. But they are gods to the people. Listen to this. They are gods to the people who make them. Hello? Yes. And sometimes, and somehow in the ancient world, it, 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 it made Israel the peculiar nation because they are the only nation who is monotheistic. When we say mono, one, theistic, is God. They only have one God. The Lord, the God of Israel, is one. They only have monotheistic. While the others are all polytheistic. Meaning, they have other gods and goddesses. In the ancient world, whatever is an important issue to man, they make a God for it. Okay. Whatever pertains to something that is important, they make a God out of it. <laughs> now, I remember when I was in college, uh, the first movie about the Clash of the Titan came out. I was, it's not a Christian movie. It was about the year 1981 or 1980. You know? Now it's a remake. Clash of the Titans. And it's interesting to study Greek mythology, right? That is where those other gods. Now, uh, Hope, can you go to my next slide? And I want to uh, read this verse. Hope, can you go there? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. I like Hope. I love Hope. And me unto. <laughs> Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world. And everybody says, Amen. Idol is nothing in the world. And that there is no other God but one. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Verse five. But even if, now Paul is saying, even if. There's no. Pero just for argument's sake, let's put, let's say that there is. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, verse 6, yet for us there is only one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we are for him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Amen. Now Paul wrote this to the Corinthians because in the ancient world, they have lots of gods. The Greeks, they have the Greek mythology, the supreme god who is Zeus. And the other gods like Hades, Poseidon, and there are Roman gods. Romans have they all? They have their parallel gods with the Greeks. They also have their their uh, their uh, mythology, the Roman mythologies. The equal of Zeus to the Greeks is Jupiter for them. They have Jupiter. They have Mars, Venus. Venus. That is what Paul is saying. That there are other gods and goddesses. 
in the ancient world. And it's very interesting. Pastor Nolly, why are you teaching this? Is, these, are, these are old men. You'll be surprised. Listen to me. Open your three ears. Listen to me. One is the ear of the heart. This Greek mythology have present day expressions in our day to day. You may not name, oh my God, is Zeus. Wow. Pisaya ka sa ikay, Zeus. Your God may not be Poseidon. Your God may not be Mercury. Your God may not be Mars or something. But I tell you, as I'm studying this topic, I was so thrilled to share it to you. Because these gods, the Greek gods and the Roman gods, are very present in our day today. And the first commandment is, you shall have no other God. God is saying, yeah, no. now, now, does it mean that God is afraid that, hey, you have other gods? Because there is no other God. The God that you're worshiping is not really a God. I am the only God, God said. You know? He wants us to be directed correctly because the all other gods are only the small G's. And it's only the Lord God of the Bible, who is the capital G. Amen. Right? That's why God said, don't have any other gods. Now, we also believed last time that the more the merrier, the more the more the more powerful, right? Right? <laughs> now God is not even suggesting that. Because the God that we have in the Bible is more than enough. Why would you need even be someone else. Right? He's the El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough. <coughs> so when he says, you shall not have, no, you, shall, you should have no other God. It means, it shouldn't be me and the others. Lord, I thank you, but you're my number one. <laughs> Even though I have number two and number three, but anyway, you're my number one. God is one. Hello? Worse is if he's not even number one. Hmm? He said, you shall have no other gods. Why? Because he is the only God anyway. The other gods that you believe is to be a God is not even a God. Not close. Okay? Go back to my slide. Though. And go back to my next slide. Bear with me with in this thought, and I will prove to you that everyone has a God. Everyone has a God. Even the atheists. You know, in my work, I was talking to uh, a patient of mine who's agnostic. Now, agnostic is not atheist, right? Agnostics are, they don't care whether there is a God. It's not important to them. The atheists are the ones who claim that there is no God. But actually they have God. Who is their God? Themselves. So everyone has a God. It saddens me. I want to come I want to go back to that patient. I don't want to tell you the, the name because uh, of course. <laughs> Someone from health <laughs> But it saddens me. And he even signed up for the uh, end of life law. You know in California, there is a law that if you want to end your life, you can. You can buy, you can buy the cocktail of drugs. And, and But you need to administer it to yourself. You cannot ask a nurse to do it. You cannot ask anyone to do it. You should be administered there. Legally, you can end your life. Yeah? That was passed, I think, a year, two years ago, here in California. In Colorado, it has already been uh, approved, but here in California, it's it's, uh, it's newly passed, only that. But you can end your life. And one condition, though, is that you need to have a, 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 
you're, you're, you're still cognitively okay. It means that your mind is still okay. You don't think your mind is okay if you want to die. <laughs> it means it is within your, no one should push it to you. It, it, is your, it, it is your own decision to die. So I was talking to this guy. When I, we newly admitted him to hospice, and, and uh, he flatly told the nurse admitting him that I don't want a check. But even though he doesn't want me, I don't take this personally. But I called him and said, no, 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 I told the, uh, the nurse I don't want to speak to a chap. I said, no, 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 I just want to introduce myself to you. And I will just be a button that uh, this service is available to you. I'll just be a button that if you need me, just call me. Two days ago, uh, he was panicking. And there's no available nurse. The social worker has got back home early. So... The team called, that my team leader called me up and said, actually the director of the uh, company called, Noel, can you uh, uh, go to this patient's house? And I said, you know, he declined. He said, but, but just go and, and provide support, whatever support, and tell him that the nurse is on this uh, way. So when I entered, <clears throat> rich guy. You know, I assigned to this rich area, Pacific Palisades, Brentwood, Westwood, Santa Monica, they just know who to assign the property. <laughs> so, as I come into his house, you know, he was so adamant, he was so withdrawn, you know, he really doesn't want to come. And he clearly identified himself as agnostic. But I told him, no, we will not be talking religion. We will not be talking spiritual. I'm just here just to casually talk to you. And you know that casual talk lasted half an hour. Somehow I, I strike a conversation about his favorite topic. Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but as I was talking to him and I put it down on my my report Actually, he's a happy man. He's at peace with himself. He's at peace that he's agnostic. There's no spiritual issue, so to speak. But deep within me, of course, I know he has a big problem. I hope I can come back and introduce my God, who is the real God, and that there is no other God. If I do that, I may be fired, <coughs> but I may save a soul. Pray for that. Hopefully no one is working in our company here, so <laughs> you're not telling my boss. Everyone has a God! This French mathematician Pascal says, there is a God-shaped vacuum in our heart, in every person. That's true. You know why? Because we, have, we are made in the image of God. Amen. And then this guy said, whenever we ascribe to something attributes that only belong to God, we've erected a false God. If we ascribe something attribute that only belong to God, we have erected a false God. You know, I grew up in the 80s. And there's one Filipino singer in the 80s who was enjoying a very good career until he sang this song. Sinasamba kita. Alam niyan? Sina kumanta niyan? Si Ray Valera. After that, somehow his career went down. You want me to sing the song to you? Oh. <laughs> Sinasamba. You only use the word samba. You only use the word worship. And the word worship only ascribes to God. Hello? Right? You may love. You may be fascinated. But never, never use the word God to any other except another. Never, never use the word worship to any other except God. Because God deserves that word. Because worship only belongs to a God. And since there is no other God, 
only ascribe the word worship to the true and living God. Amen? Amen. Let's give God a big clap. Not a holiday clap off and on. of those gods are still very evident nowadays. Okay, hope next slide. Let me give you it, the first prominent god of today's culture and that is the god of success. Listen to me carefully. If a person dreams, targets, success without God in the agenda is guilty of worshipping the God of success. And mind you, no one can even achieve true success without the author of true success and that is the true and living God. Are you listening to me? Yes. Oh yes! One can achieve a level of success. That's not ultimate. That's not ultimate. How many times you have heard the phrase, oh if I can just earn my first million. Only after earning the first million you would say, only if I can earn my second million. 
Right? 